The Lobro joint is only held on by a snap ring and a band clamp. Once it's out of the way, removing it from the shaft is easy with the exact same tools you've already been using. I'm not as violent as you are. You would have just bzzzm. Yeah. <laughs> I know you would have. It would work. Your two jaw pullers make removing the low bro joint an effortless operation. Yeah, that's a lot of work. You're right, man. I completely underestimated the stainless steel clamp on the boot and decided not to spend all day on it. I just cut it far enough to finish with the chisel. The boot slides right off. Okay, we need to pop this piece off so we can clean this joint out and take a look. Removing the boot is also a piece of cake. Use a hammer and a straight chisel for this. You won't hurt it as long as you're using the right head. It's a $230 part. Feels like it, doesn't it? In my travels, I discovered that Lobro is a German brand of slip joint that's been in use well before the 60s. It's used on Volkswagen and Porsche axles. This one's marked LJ87NTNRN4. There's a raised land on the snap ring side, and the outer race is countersunk for the gasket where it bolts up to the boot cup. The service manual specifies to glue the gaskets in at three points to ease installation, but we like punishment. Supposedly, the races and retainer are marked, but we didn't find any, so we're making our own. There's six bearings in here that we'll be removing for inspection. The mark will reference number one, and we'll count clockwise from there. I've got a stack of plastic cups. You can use anything, ice cube trays, whatever. As long as they go back in exactly the same order, you'll be fine. We're numbering them one through six for reference. Make marks on the retainer and also the inner race because they go back in exactly the same order as well. Once you're all prepped, pull and turn the inner race upright to release the bearings and rotate it into position to remove each one individually. Be careful not to lose track of the order of the bearings that decide they must exit from the bottom. Really? I'm supposed to read this? Come on, man! Cup the balls. Keep them in order. Clean them one at a time. With the last one secured, separate and clean the races in the retainer. To check for damage, use a fingernail and scratch around in all of the races. If you feel it snag any part of these surfaces, you've got a problem. If you're in here because the boot is ripped, that means moisture and dirt easily gets in, and that's this part's number one enemy. If it's rusted, scratched, or pitted, you'll need to replace it to fix it. The Volkswagen and Porsche joints are about 50 bucks each, and the boots are less than $10. Mitsubishi contracted these parts from Lobro, so it's clear to me that they didn't feel like re-engineering the wheel here. Clearly, they already had something that worked. It's only expensive for Mitsubishi because it's being marked up 500%. My question is, what other car does this joint reference out to? This is a call to you Volkswagen guys. Please help the Mitsubishi crew figure this one out. There's dozens, and I swear many of them look exactly like what I have here. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any pitting on these. No rust, nothing gouged, just some polished spots from where the ball bearings have been riding for 23 years. You can still feel the machine grooves with your thumbnail where these polished spots are, so I'm really happy with that. The inner race looks even better, and this isn't even bad. The only thing left to do is clean up the balls and the cups so we can get clean measurements on six points of each ball. If our measurements all match, then clearly this is completely reusable. We'll just reassemble it, regrease it, put some new gaskets on it, and a boot, and it's good as new. I just got the exact same measurement 18 times in a row, so I'm confident. I'm putting this thing back together now. You want to put number one and number four in first. It helps to do opposite sides because it gives you a good point of rotation and keeps the races lined up while you're installing the other bearings. Next insert number two and three. Wiggle the inner race around to make clearance through the retainer. The purpose of the retainer is to prevent the bearings and joint from separating when they're parallel to one another. Rotating the inner race gives you easy access. Don't force the bearings in. 
follow that up with five and six the exact same way and articulate it until the races line up. The service manual illustrates doing a dry assembly. Don't worry, it's still going to get plenty messy. Just wait and see. Since you can't stretch the boot over a carrier bearing, we're going to put it on first. Before you do this, you should always thoroughly clean and inspect spline surfaces for cracks or defects. I don't have much of anything for fingernails, so I'm using a pick to check the grooves and to scrape out any leftover grease. This one looks great, so we're going to grease it to make reassembly easier and to prevent rust. There's an order of doing things. Before going any further, you want to make sure this metal ring goes on first, then the boot clamp, and then the boot. You'll fight with this all day if it's not greasy. The boot fits so tight against the splines it's hard to move it. There's a 200 thousandth ridge at the end of the splines that you have to clear. I like to deal with that by using a tiny round shaft Phillips head screwdriver. After you have the boot stretched on, you insert the screwdriver and stir until desired thickness is achieved. Then press it down onto the seal boss to make room for installing the joint. You want to leave this loose for now. You want to make clamping this down the last thing you do after getting all the bolt holes lined up. We're using Redline CV2, synthetic high performance extreme pressure grease with Red Molly. Mitsubishi insists we use the 60 gram bottle of NKG 607, but we said nope. This is good grease. It's red. It has to be better. It's what the VW and Porsche guys swear by, so it's time we put it to use and install this low row joint back on the drive shaft where it belongs. We'll give it one last good cleaning and then pack it with grease. Gloves? Who needs them? Are you done yet? <laughs> so she's there. So you see this little ring right here? There's one side that has a recessed ring and the other side is completely flat. And what you want to do is you want to put the side with the recessed ring facing the boot. But before we do that, we need to put a gasket down here. Somewhere under all this grease, there's also a marking. Um, and this marking indicates which way we're supposed to put it on the... Oh, there it is. Indicates which way we're supposed to put it on the shaft. And you see that arrow means it goes towards the front of the car or the yoke. Because that's the way we marked it. Alright, the factory service manual says to use a hammer and a socket and beat it down on there. There's a little lip that goes around this piece. You don't want to bang directly on that. You want a socket that's big enough to go around it and then uh, lightly tap it with the hammer down until it gets it seated into position. So make sure your socket's clean before you do this. Also, you want to use something that's got a semi-dead blow and with all the grease and work we've put into cleaning this up it doesn't take much to tap tap it tap it right down you feel it when it gets to the bottom I felt it smack yeah it smacked the kit comes with a new snap ring it uses a different set of snap ring pliers these actually spread it out instead of compressing the ring in and you just uh, place that over that thing in the groove and Now another important thing to do before you get too crazy is to line up all the bolt holes around the outside of the Lobro joint with the boot. And the best way to do that, I'm just going to take two bolts. First I'm going to double check our gasket. Looks like it slipped out of place. Definitely want to mess with that first. I want to get that lined up with one of the bolts. Put that in place. Wipe out the inside of the flange. 
and he likes to put a little extra grease in here. We're going to go ahead and do that. All right, dude, that's enough. I just wanted to cover the nut, that's all. And we've got our other gasket here. What we want to do is just get that lined up with the holes. I'm going to use my clean hands, take a little bit of this grease, and dab it inside these six little pieces here just to hold the gasket in place. This is my seven millimeter, and we set this to 25 foot pounds. 24, 5. Oh no, what have you done? Oh look at that, that's just sad and depressing. All bent and mangled. Yeah, well, you know, it happens. And you know what else? It's metal. Let's grab this piece and bend it. Bend it right on back. So we gotta find the arrow on here. You see that arrow? That arrow is right there, is where that clip is supposed to go. And what we're gonna do is hold that in place while I grab this one and we fold this over. Line up the arrow. What I also learned Go about this logo hand. joint is that pretty much every all-wheel drive Mitsubishi out there from 1983 to 1999 uses this exact same joint. The part numbers all reference out. Colt Vistas, Chariots, Space Wagons, Eclipse, Talon Laser, VR4 models of both the 3000 GTs and Gallants, including also the Gallant GSX. They all use the same joint and boot kit. That's another good bit of info for all you junkyard dogs out there.